Hi everyone, Pastor Joe from Fordham Manor Church. Welcome to Fordham Manor's official YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can be notified about the latest sermons as they come. We are hearing testimonies. Many people are being blessed by the messages. Make sure to tell others, share our channel, and remember, all things are possible for those who believe. The Lord is where my help comes from. Amen? Well, good afternoon. How's everyone today? This cloudy Sunday morning. Don't worry, the sun is coming out, they say, tomorrow. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome those of you who are visiting us and joining us for the very first time. My name is Pastor Joe, and I'm the senior pastor of this amazing church here at Florida Manor. I also want to welcome those of you who are joining us via YouTube and Facebook Live. Praise the Lord. We believe that God has a word for you as well. Amen. And today we are going back to the Gospel of Matthew. I started that last year. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 6? Matthew chapter 6. And we will be looking at a familiar prayer, commonly known as the Our Father or the Lord's Prayer. One of the functions of prayer is to ask God for things that we want, especially the big things. We ask God for, if we're single, for a spouse. We ask God for a job. We ask God for an apartment. And in some cases, we ask God for a new family because the old one is just not working out. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. We've asked that. Lord, give us a new family. The asking part of prayer is easy because all of us want God to give us what we want, when we want, and how we want it. For those who have children, you don't want, though, your older kids only turning to you when they need somebody. Can I get an amen? You expect that from little children. Uh, You don't want them, you want your children to come and visit and say hello. God is looking for us to have a relationship with him through prayer, and the Our Father is evidence of that. But our default mode when it comes to prayer, and I'll just speak for your pastor, is if we pray at all, is to rush into God's presence, to recite our list, to say a quick prayer and keep it moving like a supermarket self-checkout line. Amen? Anybody ever get stuck in one of those? Oh, man, that's irritating. That's it. You want to get in and out, right? And that person just doesn't know whatever. So how can we move past the me and learn how to pray like God is on the other side ready to hear us and ready to respond to our daily needs? In the Our Father, Jesus shows us the model of prayer that teaches us how to pray so that we can go to him and we can get closer to the Father's heart. The Our Father is not meant to be a prayer that we robotically pray to cover our prayer time. The prayer is meant to, as a means of getting closer to God and understanding how and what we should pray for. The Our Father is a prayer of a relationship, and a relationship cannot be built on hollow words. Who wants to pray more effectively today? Who wants to get closer to God's heart today? Well, let's, let's really look at the Our Father today from new eyes, because some of us know it and haven't memorized. But Jesus said that when you pray, you're to pray like this. So let's pay attention to what Jesus was telling us to do. Would you bow your heads with us at this time as we pray and approach God's holy word? Father, we thank you, Lord, that our help comes from you. You are the maker of heaven and earth, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, O God, today that you are greater than any mountain that we face. Lord, that you that you are there, you are present in our trials. You promise to help us uh, and to lead us, Lord. And today, in the name of Jesus, we present our hearts. Lord, I ask that you would open our hearts to hear what your spirit is speaking to us. Remove every distraction that might prevent your word from penetrating our hearts so that we can get closer to your heart in prayer. Father, I commit to you this time together in the name of Jesus and all of God's people say, amen. We are in Matthew chapter 6. We're starting at verse 9. And this is Jesus speaking. This then is how you should pray. Our Father, 
Your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. Amen. The title of today's message is very simply, Our Father. And it is my hope that you see this prayer as a guide for your personal prayer time. It is my hope that you have a prayer notebook. If you don't have one, that you start a prayer notebook and maybe use the Our Father as a heading for your direction for prayer. The Our Father contains six requests. And we will see that the first three requests don't have anything to do with us, but have everything to do with God. In the Our Father, we learn that it is not all about us at all. Tell your neighbor, it's not about you. Right? Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these other things that you're worried about will be added unto you throughout our lives We wake up concerned about our day, worried about the things that are on heart. But Jesus says that when you pray, we are to be concerned about God's agenda first. Be concerned about pleasing him. Be concerned about how you can best represent him throughout your day. Pray that way, and God promises that everything that you're worried about, that he will take care of. God first, our needs second. Tell your neighbor when you pray. Make God first, my need second. All right, God first. So that's the thing we're going to look at first. Our Father in heaven, that's how the prayer opens. And Jesus wants us to make sure that we know who we are praying to. Those who have been adopted by the blood of Jesus are part of God's family. That adoption through Christ means that God is your father today. Now, some of us need some knowledge about this father. We need to learn about the heavenly father because some of our earthly fathers were not present in our lives. Some of our earthly fathers were around, but they were mean and cruel. For others who had good fathers that worked hard and did their best, even they made mistakes and they have regrets But our Father in heaven is not like our earthly fathers because he is perfect. Someone say perfect. Our Father in heaven is the author of everything good that is in your life. Our Father in heaven is good. He is for you and not against you. I need to set the record straight for someone here. I'm here to let someone know that Father knows best. Tell your neighbor, Father knows best. All right, let's try that again. Father knows best. Tell your neighbor. Right. He won't let you down. He won't. Won't you learn how to trust him by speaking to him every single day? Test him. Show him. Say, Lord, I'm here. I'm here. I'm coming to you. I'm presenting my request to you. And he, he will not let you down. God first. Request number one. May I honor your name. Now, the old school way of saying this was, hallowed be thy name. How many know the, the, our Father by heart? Amen? Anybody went to Catholic school? I went to Catholic school many years. Have it memorized, right? We said, hallowed be thy name, but nobody I know knows what hallowed means, right? But we sure do know how to respect authority. Tell your neighbor, respect authority. We do know how to honor and respect that police officer. You know, 5-0 when he comes around and he puts on the whoop, whoop, right? You start respecting authority at that point in time if you know what's good for you. And if you know what's good for you, if you go in a courtroom and you're on trial and that judge comes out in a robe, you start respecting authority. Hallowing the name means respecting the authority of God. Our Father in heaven, your name is to be honored as holy, puts first things first in your life. The name of God is to be respected and honored in our lives. His name is to be revered. 
and worshiped regardless of what I am facing today. His name is to be praised regardless of how I feel in the morning. Is anybody here like me and you wake up cranky in the morning? Come on, somebody. Amen. I, I wake up cranky in the morning, right? I don't feel like praising God. But you know what? It's not about me. It's about God. So I start praising him. I start lifting him up. To honor his name means calling on his name regardless of what condition you find yourself in. Call on his name in the morning means seeking him with all that you have. Calling on his name means proclaiming him as Lord over your life in a new day. Calling on his name means running to him when you are fearful. When we say our Father in heaven, that his name is holy, that means we are proclaiming that his name is to be set apart. And no person or no situation has authority over him. How many believe that today? That no matter what you're facing today, it's not too hard for the God of the universe. Amen? How many believe that today? Hallowed be thy name. Your name is above everything else that I face today. There is nothing too difficult for you. You know what happens when you praise the name of Jesus to start your day? Your perspective changes. You start looking up. Instead of looking ahead. How many know what I'm talking about today? Someone say, look up. Right? We need to start looking up because all of us are worried about what's happening over here. But God says, first start your day by looking up to me. When you start looking up, you and I see the qualities and attributes of God. And see, suddenly our circumstances don't look so big. Our needs don't feel so overwhelming. Jesus says that when we pray, we need to get our eyes off ourselves first and understand whose presence that we're coming into. Let's praise his name first. Amen. Let's proclaim his name to be holy. Let's worship the name of Jesus by putting on praise and worship songs. Come on, somebody. Who's done this in the morning? Who prays, puts on praise and worship? Some of us need to change the atmosphere in the morning. You got all kinds of negativity in your life. You're, you're feeling down. You're feeling depressed. Put on some praise and worship music and see if that atmosphere won't change. Amen? Come on, somebody. You're down about your kids. You're down about your job. You're down about, put on some praise, worship, and music. And let's start lifting up the name of Jesus. How many know that we don't have to just do this on Sundays? God is calling us to worship him and to exalt him and put his name first in your hearts. Change the atmosphere in your apartment. Move it from impossible to all things are possible for him who believes. Amen? So request that his name be high and lifted up in your day and in your behavior. Ask that God, that his name be honored in your thoughts in your actions, in your attitudes. When we pray, let's put God first. May I honor your name. Second request, God first. Let your kingdom come, verse 10. God's kingdom territory is found whenever a heart proclaims Jesus as the king to the glory of God the Father. When you pray, your kingdom come. We are asking the Lord to establish his rule in our hearts and extend that rule into the lives of those around us who understands what I'm talking about. Amen? I, I have to say, it's been amazing serving the Lord Jesus. He's been so good to me. Come on, somebody. Can I, does anybody agree? His, his blessings flow deep within my heart. Amen? How many would agree with me today that it's been amazing serving the Lord? Now, if that's true... Let's pray that God's kingdom, his territory, be extended into the lives of our family and our extended family, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbors. How many believe that God wants to take some territory? Amen. How many believe that God wants us to extend, call, to pray with him and say, Lord, extend your territory through me? Amen. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Let it be established in my heart and in the lives of those around me. Teachers, what would happen if all the kids in your school were saved? What kind of effect would that have on families? Come on. Come on, somebody. Your kingdom come. Come on. That's not just, this is possible. All things are possible for those who believe. Amen? Construction workers, what would, your, what would happen to your work environment if your coworkers gave their hearts to Christ? How would your building change if there were revival 
and your neighbors started joining you for church on Sunday morning and started putting away drugs and heavy drinking and saying, you know what? My heart belongs to Christ. Come on, somebody. Your kingdom come. Be established all around me. Who has a vision for something greater today? That God's not just about you, and it, but, but about your family and about your neighborhood and about those around you. Amen. That's praying your kingdom come. Reign, Lord Jesus. Reign over this place. How many see the brokenness of sin in your lives and in the family's lives? When we pray your kingdom come, we're asking God to eliminate and reverse the effects of brokenness around us for the, for the sake of his name. Hallelujah. Second request, your kingdom come. Break the chains in my life and in the lives of others because that's what a king does. A king comes to, cat, to set the captives free. Who the son sets free is free indeed today. Your kingdom come in my heart. I'm not supposed to be bound. Jesus set me free. Heal the brokenhearted. Heal the diseases. You know why? Because your kingdom established in heaven has no disease. It has no sickness. And I'm asking that your kingdom be established here as it already is up there. Come on, somebody. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. God first. Third request. Your will be done. Now, I have a certain way of doing things. I like getting up at a certain time, not with an alarm, preferably. I like working a certain way. I like setting up my schedule with minimal interruptions. I like being in charge. Come on, is this, is this your, just your pastor? Or is, can somebody identify over here, right? I like others serving me instead of serving them. And I like a certain level of service. Come on, somebody. Who knows what I'm talking about? Your pastor's not the only bougie one here. Come on. Who knows what I'm talking about? I like to be served, right? When we pray, God, your will be done, it means that my agenda is secondary. It means who can I serve today instead of how can others serve me? When I pray, your will be done in the a.m., I'm allowing the Spirit of God to interrupt my day and say, you know what? I got things that I want to do, but Spirit of God, lead me today. Send me to whoever you want me to, to speak to. Show me who you want me to pray for today. Who it is it that, that's on your heart and how I can intercede for them. When I pray, not my will, but your will be done, I'm allowing the Spirit of God to order my steps and say, today, I might, I might have this list of things to do, but if you have something else for me to do, I'll do it. Your will be done, not my will be done. Come on, somebody. We need to start praying. Your will be done in my finances. I have a way that I want to spend. I have credit cards that I want to extend. But I want your will to be done because perhaps there's someone in need. Your will be done in my time today. How do you want me to spend your time? Your will be done in any requests I present to you. Your will be done, not my will be done. We don't like this one. This is not so exciting. Uh, but I have a long list of prayer requests. But, but God, when I come into your throne of grace, I'm really concerned about your will being done in my life and in my heart. And if I have a sin in my heart, I ask, Lord, that you would deal with it however you desire. Do whatever it takes to take out anything that's not pleasing to you. Now, that's a dangerous prayer. But how many know today that God wants to clean us up? Right? He loves you the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the way that you came in. Amen? How many believe that today? Your will be done in my life. I want to glorify you in everything that I do. God first, your name, your kingdom, your will. These are my first concerns when I pray. That's what Jesus says in the Our Father. Now, you can pray the Our Father just remotely, and you can get done in about six seconds, or you can break this down, and you can get specific under each request, under each layer. And you know what? You're going to start praying for a little while longer. Who knows what I'm talking about? God first. Next, we move on to our needs. Now, this is the part that we like. All right, Pastor Joe, good. I'm, you got that God stuff out of the way. That's what I'm talking about. I want my needs met. When we pray, Jesus says, ask for our basic needs to be met. He also says we are to ask for forgiveness from God and give it to others. And he also says that we are to ask for help in spiritual 
warfare. So first, we ask for our basic needs to be met. Now, daily bread doesn't feel so relevant in this day and age. Can I get an amen from somebody? I don't know about you, but I am blessed to have as much access to bread as I want. In fact, I have a little too much bread. I'm just being, I'm confessing it's good for the soul. That's my issue, as I had to cut down the amount of bread that I'm eating, right? And, and some of us are dealing with that same struggle, right? But now we may face a day that where suddenly we may need bread. And if they, that day comes, it's good to know that there is a God who cares and promises to meet that need. We've been watching the news and watching the people in Houston have great physical needs that we take for granted, right? The need for shelter, the need for food, all of those things, just gone in a minute. Venezuela, inflation, inflation is out of control, and people have to cook on, over fire because they can't afford propane. Daily bread is something that we should be grateful for and ask God and thank God every day for what he has given in provision. Has anybody ever gone through a thank you, Lord, list? Come on, somebody. How many know today that we have great wealth in this country? You're like, I'm not rich, Pastor Joe. Well, compared to 99% of the world's population, we are wealthy. And we can thank God for that wealth and say, you know what, Lord? Thank you for a roof over my heads. Thank you for running water. Come on, somebody who knows what I'm talking about. Thank you for the clothes that I have in great abundance. That is the God that we serve. We thank him for his daily bread. Food and shelter may not be your issue. But we all have some, kind, some area of material, spiritual, and emotional need that we are lacking. Some of us have income needs. We need a job. Maybe we need to get out of debt. We need God's help in controlling our spending and becoming more disciplined with what he has given us. Give us this day our daily bread and grant us the discipline to be wise in this materialistic and greedy world that we live in. Maybe your concern isn't money, but it's physical health. Daily bread means going through the day asking God for a miracle breakthrough in the course of medications and seeing doctors and asking the Lord who is our healer and say, Lord, I'm asking you for that healing. I'm believing in Jesus' name that you made that provision. And by your stripes, I am healed. I am receiving that daily bread from you. I'm going to have the strength that I need from this day until I get the healing that God wants to give me. Amen? Some of our emotional banks are overdrafted. We battle with anxiety. We battle with depression. We battle with sorrow. We battle mental illness. Daily bread asks the Lord for the strength to get through that day, the supernatural strength that God promises to give to his people. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. God wants to give you that strength to go on. He is the God of hope, and he is the God that is speaking life into your situation and into the darkness that you're facing for this particular day. All of us have at least one need, but you know what? It's not just about us because it says, give us this day our daily bread. Someone say our. So that's not just you. I know you like to focus on you, but you got a family. Come on, somebody. You got friends, and they have daily bread needs. And it's incumbent upon us and say, God, give, a, give them the daily bread that they need for this day. Give them strength to hold on another day. Give them what they need in this hour of grief that they're facing. All of us have at least one need, and we have a God who promises to provide what we need. But the problem is that some of us don't have because we don't ask. Did you know the Bible says that? You don't have because you don't ask. I don't know about you, but we, I got the God of the universe behind my back. Do you know how big this universe is? We don't even know how big it is. But let me tell you, he is so awesome, he is so powerful that I'm going to continue to ask him for everything that I need. Come on, somebody. Who knows who's going to be ready to ask? Ask God for more because he has more. He owns it all on the cattle of the thousand hills. Do you owe money? He has that money. Are you facing a uh, physical uh, illness? He has the healing that you need for today. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's be specific 
in your request before the Lord. Come on, show of hands, who has a prayer notebook here? Come on, who has a prayer notebook? If you haven't started, it's not to shame you. It's time to start a prayer notebook because it's time for you to start writing down your request every single day. Put down a date by your request. And you know what's cool? God answers prayer. So when I go back, I say, wow, that was answered. That was answered. That was answered. And it's not just because Pastor Joe is, 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 is your pastor. God wants to answer your prayers. Start writing down your prayer requests. Start getting specific and see if God doesn't answer your prayer, how he'll answer it in a way that's better. How many believe that God will answer something better? Amen? That's the God we serve. He's not going to let you down. He's too awesome. All right, so first we saw we have our basic needs that we need to have met. But there's also an even greater need in all of our souls. Every single person that is here, every single person that is watching has a great need in our hearts to be forgiven. All of us here struggle against the weight of guilt. All of us struggle against the weight of shame. All of us struggle with our conscience. And there is a God who says, I'm going to take care of your most essential basic need. And that's to be forgiven. We are to pray and forgive us our debts. Our Heavenly Father knows our sins. He knows where we fall short. He knows where we struggle to show love to those who are unlovable. He knows about the temper that is unrestrained in your life that you only show to your family members. I'm reading somebody's mail today. He sees where you are falling short in your struggle to remain sexually pure in your thought life. Don't hide from him. Don't try to pretend like it's not there. Come to him and ask him to deliver you from those sins that you are hooked on. Confess to him that sin. Because if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all. Someone say all. All unrighteousness. You know what? I don't care what you're facing today. I don't care what your sin is. There is a God who is ready to clean up that sin mess and give you the strength to say no to that sin. Can we praise God today? How many believe that today? Amen. The struggle for sin doesn't get any easier. Right? And your, your pension for sin will not disappear this side of eternity. So if you're like, you know what, Pastor Joe, I, did, I went throughout this whole week and I didn't sin. I'm going to say, you know what, brother, sister, you're sincere. Then you got to go back to the word. If you're not, then I'll be like, you're lying right now. Because all of us have struggles. All of us have things that we are facing today. As I walk with Christ, I simply become more aware of the areas where I fall short of his glory. As I walk with Christ, I see my selfishness and my unwillingness to submit in certain areas. As I walk with Christ longer, I repent more often. And immediately when I sin, so I can shake off. Someone say shake off. We got to shake off condemnation because that's the enemy. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. Condemnation and being putting you down comes from the enemy. So I shake that off by immediately repenting and say, Lord, that was foul. I shouldn't have said that. That was wrong. Or I should have said something, but I didn't. Forgive me, Lord. Come on, somebody. Who knows what I'm talking about today? We need to keep our confessions quick and immediate in the name of Jesus so that we can shake off condemnation and we can shake off shame because the enemy wants to do both to trap you. If we want forgiveness from God, though, there is a catch. There is a catch. And I know some of you are like, oh, I knew it. I knew there was a catch. What is the catch? The catch to getting forgiveness is not that you really, really, really meant it, that you were sorry. That's not the catch. All of us have been like the Apostle Peter and sworn that we would never do something only to deny Jesus like two minutes later and do it three times. Come on, who knows what I'm talking about here today? Amen? The catch is that we forgive those who sin against us. Verse 14. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Here's the catch. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. 
in the Greek, it says, your father will not forget your si- forgive your sins. In the Spanish, it says, your father will not forgive your sins. It is so clear. We need to forgive those who trespass against us, those who sin against us. We can't say we're good if we've forgiven 95% of the way. We need to forgive those who offend us, hurt us, and put us down. It could have happened 10 years ago. It could have happened 20 years ago. It could have happened 30 years ago. But if that sting is still there, you need to forgive. If that person is still coming up in your mind in the morning and say, you know what? I forgive them, Lord. And I need your help to just forgive me. Allow me to forgive them completely and totally. Why do we do this? Because you know what? All of us have been, have been forgiven for a debt that none of us could pay, repay back. All of us are, have been fallen so short, and all of us need Christ. So in turn, we are to forgive that debt that they owe against us. When we pray, we ask for our basic necessities to be met. We ask for and, and give forgiveness. And lastly, we get help in spiritual warfare. Someone say warfare. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lastly, we pray for spiritual protection. When we pray, lead us not into temptation. We are not asking God to take us away from trials completely. How many know that trials will come to Christians? Amen? And if you thought that you be, you, you be, become a Christian and you aren't going to have any more trials, I'm sorry. Somebody lied to you. It wasn't here. Maybe you were watching the wrong TV show, but who knows what I'm talking about. If you become a Christian, you will continue to experience trials. We are not going to be tempted because we still have, we are going to be tempted because we still have this flesh. God, for his part, will not tempt us. And he will not allow us to go beyond what we can bear. He wants us to rely on him to overcome the temptations. When we pray, lead us not into temptation, we are asking the Lord to help us to rely on his strength, his power to overcome sin. I don't know about you, but I put no confidence in the flesh. I need God's help to overcome temptation every single day. Not only will God answer our prayers to lead us from the desire to sin, he also promises to deliver us from the enemy. How many need to be delivered from the enemy? Come on, somebody. How many know that he has a lot of traps set up for us every single day, and he wants to set you up? And how many know today that the enemy does not take Labor Day off? (laughs) Amen. Or New Year's or Christmas, there's no vacation for him. You may take vacation, but he sees an opening. So we need to be careful because there are no off days for him. And that means every single day we are in the midst of a spiritual battle. And if we are in a spiritual battle, then we need to be alert and we need to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Someone say, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That means you have to be alert every single day. That means you have to expect the enemy to come. Some of you get surprised, man. I can't believe that the enemy set me up this way. No, you got to be expecting that. He wants to trip you up. Some of you are like, man, I was going so strong in the things of God, and then I got tripped up. Well, you know what? He's coming after you. The minute you get closer to the Lord, the minute you say, you know what? I'm committing my time in the mornings to prayer. You know what? He's going to come. But the Lord doesn't leave us alone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This is the good news. This is the good news. He promises to deliver us from evil and deliver us from the evil one's schemes. But you have not because you... So we need to ask him and say, Lord, deliver me from evil today. Deliver me from every trap that I can't see. Father, make me alert when there's a scheme that's going on, right? Just like you're alert on the subway. You're looking out, checking out make everybody, making sure that they ain't scheming on you. Same thing. You got to say, Lord, make me alert to any spiritual attack that's happening to me and to my family because I want to be ready. How many want to be ready today? Amen? And it's not in our own strength. It's in the Lord's strength. And he wants to give you the victory. When you pray, deliver us from evil 
pray, God, give me the victory over the devil and his schemes. How many of you know the Lord wants us to be on the offensive? Amen. He wants us to be, be pursuing the devil's gates. Amen. And taking the captives and setting them free just like Jesus. Amen. He doesn't want us to be on the defensive all the time. Deliver us from evil. Give me the help in spiritual warfare today. Let me be strong in you and in your mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. He will give you the victory. Quick applications as we close. So if you have a pen, you might want to take it out. Here's some applications. This is how to make it practical in your everyday life. How to make the Our Father practical so that when you pray, you don't be like, what did Pastor Joe say? I forgot. Here it is. First thing, Our Father. Write down the Our Father in a prayer notebook and try breaking it down into pieces. I mentioned that before. For example, hallowed be thy name. May your name be honored in my life. However you say that. At home, at school, at work, personalize it. Praise the name of the Lord in the mornings. Before you start your day, put on the headphones, start worshiping the Lord, and, and, and get on the, the subway and start changing the atmosphere in the subway. Come on, somebody. Who knows what I'm talking about? They may look at you weird when you're throwing up your hands, but that's okay. That's right. They need holy hands. Some of them need hands laid on them. Amen. Praise God. That's another story for another day. Your kingdom come. Lord, rule over everything in my life. Nothing is off limits. Nothing is off limits. Let everything come in line with your word. My family members, have your way in their lives. Get specific. Say, Lord, save them. Lord, heal them. Do what you have to do. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done. I got things that I want to do, Lord. I got this day. I wanted to go this way. But I want you to rearrange it. I want you to give me a signal and say, no, don't go this way, go that way. I want you to put a picture of somebody that I need to pray for today and give them a call because just, it's just in time. Your will be done. Consider daily bread. What are your needs? Get specific. Do you need a car? Ask the Lord for a car. Do you need a, an apartment? Ask the Lord for an apartment. Do you need a job? Ask the Lord for a job and get specific. How many know that God wants to hear our specific requests? Amen? Amen. Lead us not into temptation. Consider the trials that you're facing. Consider the struggles that you're losing. Ask the Lord to give you, and write them down. Write them down. Get specific. Ask the Lord to give you victory in those areas. Lastly, consider the spiritual war that you face every day. There is an enemy that wants to pounce on you. There is an enemy that wants to distract you. And I need you to write down and say, Lord, help me today to be alert. Help me today to consider what he's trying to do. Help me to see the traps ahead of time. How many of the Lord will answer that prayer? Amen. Praise the Lord. God is calling us to go beyond me to look up to him. God first means, in prayer, having a relationship with Jesus where he promises to take care of all our needs in spirit, soul, and body and give you the victory in spiritual warfare. Our Father is a good, good Father. Get to know him to be better today. Amen? Praise the Lord. Would you bow your heads with me? With every, be with every head bowed, I want to consider, want us to consider what a privilege we have in coming to the Father in heaven. He is God Almighty, creator of everything seen and unseen. And yet, he invites us to know him. His will is better than our will. When his kingdom is established, there is healing, there is redemption. There is hope. Have you taken advantage of this great, great privilege in coming to him in prayer every day? Because of Jesus, we have that opportunity. If you are here today and you see your need to put God first in prayer, put God first in your day, put God first in your finances or some other area, 
But you just need more of God and, and less of yourself. Would you indicate it by raising your hand, saying, Pastor Joe, I'm just coming in agreement with the Holy Spirit right now. He's speaking to me in my life, in my situation. Maybe your prayers haven't been specific. God's telling you today, it's time to start writing down some prayer requests. It's time to get specific in what you need and start to be persistent in that because I want to hear from you every day. And I want to bless you through a relationship. Maybe there's a sin that you've been trying to hide or justify in your hearts today, but today you're feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit and ready to confess that sin before a holy God who offers the forgiveness and the ability to say no to that sin. If that's you, would you indicate it by raising your hand saying, you know what, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm believing God for the impossible. I'm trusting in him. I'm confessing my sin today because he sees it all anyway. And I'm going I'm, I'm to stop pretending like there are no issues in my life. Amen. Our Father, we come to you today to put you first. You deserve our attention. You are holy and perfect and amazing. We offer our prayers to you today. We offer our praise to you today. Father, let your kingdom be established in our hearts so that you are king over every area in my life today. We ask that your kingdom be established in hearts all around us, friends, family, co-workers. Let your will be done, not mine. Your way is better. Father, we thank you for, the, for what we have today and, the, and pledge to be specific about what we don't have. We, ask, we have not because we ask not, but today we're going to get specific. We're going to say exactly what we need because you know it, but you want to hear from us. Forgiveness of sins that we've been hiding from you. Cleanse us and wash us by the blood of Jesus. And today we forgive those who harm us, treat us with contempt. Maybe for the first time, maybe for the 150th time, but our hearts aren't right in that area. We forgive them, Lord. Give us the victory in spiritual warfare today over the schemes and tactics of the enemy. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Our help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. With every head bowed, I want to pray for those of you who would say, Pastor Joe, I don't have a relationship with God. I don't really pray, but I want to have the relationship you talked about, that Jesus talked about in the Our Father, a closeness with God. Jesus says that the only way to the Father is through him. He is the way, and, and his way is, and he makes a way possible through his death on Calvary. If you're here today and you want to call the God of the universe Father, come through Jesus. Acknowledge your sin and ask for forgiveness and receive the free gift of adoption into his family. Anyone here today, maybe you're watching a video that would say, you know what, I've never acknowledged my sinful nature. I need a savior today, Pastor Joe. If that's you, would you indicate it by raising your hand saying, I need Jesus today. I need a relationship with God. Amen. God bless you, my brother. I see your hand. Anybody else that would say, I need a relationship with God the great Father. God bless you. I see your hand. Amen. Anyone else would say, you know what? I need a relationship with God. This, this closeness that you're mentioning, I would love to have this in my life. If that's you, would you indicate it by raising your hand? Just slip up your hand so I know who I'm praying for. God bless you. I see your hand, my brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those of you who are here and you want Jesus in your life, maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you want to, want to be included in this prayer. I'm going to ask you to put your hand on your heart right now. This is a prayer between you and God. The God who created this universe, he loves you. And he has a purpose and plan for your life today. So I'm going to ask you to repeat, but this is a prayer between you and God. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that you are perfect. Jesus, I know that you are the Son of God who came to live a perfect life and die the death that I should have died. Please come into my life today and make me new. Heavenly Father, be my perfect Father from this day on. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Can we give God praise today? 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching our Fordham Manor YouTube channel. For further information, please visit our website at FordhamManor.org. God bless.